Hi, my name's Meredith Ransley and welcome to Perfect Ponies for Tiny Tots. Um, you've, you've bought the package, you've got the booklet and this is the DVD that goes along with that. And you brush your pony for a minute, babe? We've had a lot of fun filming this. They always say don't work with animals and small children and what have we got? Three small children and three small animals. Um, so it's great fun filming this with the kids. But I've, uh, this is a really important subject that I feel um, that I, I would love to share with everybody that's in a situation like I am myself here with the small children. These are all my kids. This is Caitlin, she's 17 months. I've got Rhiannon behind me, she's four and a half, and Liam's three. And our beautiful ponies, uh, Briggy's 19. Been there, done that, a great pony for small children. Tilly behind me here, she's eight. Another fantastic, quiet, educated pony, fantastic for small children. And Tani down the end, she's about five, Liam's little pony. And uh, we'll get to see all of these ponies throughout the course of the video shortly. So if you've got small children about this age, from babies up to about five or six, and you think they would uh, be interested in getting involved with horses, but you've got more questions than you have answers, this is the pack for you. Have a read of the book, watch the video, make sure you have a look at the checklist. We've, we've gone through that in the book and we'll also go through it in the video as well. Make sure your ponies tick all the boxes and uh, set yourself up and your children up for a fantastic, fun, safe, confident future with horses. I think it's really important when we're looking for ponies for our children to um, make sure we look for a pony that's not just quiet but educated as well. I think that uh, it's probably something that um, maybe isn't understood or, or really appreciated that the difference between the two. Obviously you want a quiet pony when you're talking about really small children. We're talking about tiny tots here up to about four or five years old. But um, you, you want a horse that's, um, that's got some education behind it as well and we'll, we'll really see the differences between those two and, and why that's important in a minute when we start running through our checklist. Um, we're going to have a look at the checklist from the book that you would have already read about helping you to choose the right pony for your child. Um, this is Tilly that I've got here. She's about eight years old. She's uh, my oldest daughter's pony and she's a lovely little quiet horse as you can see. But she's not just quiet, she's, she's also got some education as well. So that really helps for uh, Rhiannon with her confidence. Um, confidence is a big thing when you're dealing with small children and horses. It's a huge thing for anybody, no matter what age you are as a horse person. It's one of the biggest things that I see that I come across teaching my, my adult students, people who've maybe lost their confidence with their horse and it can be really, really hard to get back again. So for our small children, if they're going to be horse lovers all their life and be into ponies and horses, let's help, help build their confidence now and help keep their confidence into the future as well. Um, so an educated horse will help with that. Now this little pony here, obviously she's nice and quiet. You can see I'm down on my knees here just to uh, get a bit of a perspective um, from a child's angle, how a child would see a horse. As an adult, um, when you're dealing with a small pony like this, they don't seem very intimidating. She's quite a bit smaller than me if I stood up next to her, but it's interesting to see things from how your child would see it. Even a tiny little pony like this, from this perspective, can seem like a huge creature, especially if you're unfamiliar with them, as uh, a lot of children are. So um, take a look at things from your child's perspective, and it's good too to see how the pony deals with, with people at this height. Sometimes I respect a big person um, more than a little person, so if you're out there playing with a pony they might listen to what you say but how are they going to go with somebody small on the end of the lead rope? Um, so let's have a look at our, our little checklist here. Um, you want to make sure that your pony is happy to be touched all over and rubbed all over. Now as an adult I might be a little bit more um, gentle and smooth and soft with the, with the pony than what a child would be. If you've got small children especially toddlers um, around ponies, they're not going to be quite so um, polite with the pony, I would say. So they're going to be coming up to the pony, they're going to be climbing all over it, they're going to be getting underneath it, they're going to be pulling on their ears, they're going to be getting a hold of their nose, tugging on here, sticking their fingers in places that you probably wouldn't think of. So when you're rubbing the pony all over to make sure that it's quiet, don't be too gentle with them. Just try to be a little bit more like what your child would be. You might even give her a little bit of a pat and see how she deals with that. She's going to have children climbing all over her, doing all sorts of things. So we want to make sure that she's quite happy about all of that. How does she go with somebody pulling on her mane? Give those ears a little tug, give her a bit of a pat, maybe even pull on her tail a little bit. How does she feel about this? Strange things to be doing when you're checking out a horse to buy, but we're talking about preparing them for a child not an adult, so make sure that they're really happy to be touched all over, everywhere. 
I'm just going to check out picking up her feet while I'm here. I'd like to better prepare her for all these sorts of things so that when the children are working with her that uh, they can have a little bit of independence with their pony. The more you can prepare the horse before the child comes out to, to play with them, um, then the more independent your child will be able to be with their pony. And I, I think that's really important for building their confidence too. If they can do things for themselves, they'll feel quite proud of that. And that'll build some confidence. Do a bit of a tap there, she's a good girl. Make sure I can do that on both sides. She's a great pony. Good girl. So be a little bit boisterous when you're moving around the pony. The more we can check out that she can handle things, the better off we're going to be. I'd like to even put a little bit of weight on her while I'm here. She's going to be a, a horse for children to ride. The balance isn't going to necessarily be what that what it would be for an adult. So they're going to be climbing all over here, probably even standing on it, doing all sorts of things. You'll be surprised what they get up to. So just make sure that she can handle all this. She's quite happy to have that bit of weight on there while I'm climbing all over her. She's a good girl. You can see how important it is to have a nice, quiet, educated pony. She's been there, done that. She's a great little pony for my daughter. We'll just take a look at a few things from our checklist now. Now these are still things that I'll be looking at um, when I'm looking to buy a pony for my, for my child and also things that we need to be able to do later on when she's working with this horse herself or riding it. Um, so the first thing we're going to have a look at is just our backup. These things are going to be our, our brakes and our steering later on. So make sure we can back her up by touching her. Good girl. Try and get down a little bit. You notice me crouch. I'm trying to get down a little bit more towards my child's perspective. Make sure I can you and her hind quarter across. Good girl. And her front end. So the back end is about controlling their the speed and direction, that's the power. The front end is our steering. Make sure I can do both of those things and it's nice and light. Now if you have an uneducated horse, they may not be able to do these things. You might be able to work on that and help your horse out a little bit, but ideally you want a pony that can do this already. When it comes to children's ponies, tiny tots ponies, you want a pony that ticks all the boxes. If you've got an older child that's a bit more experienced or you know for yourself, you might not mind if there's a few boxes that still need to be worked on. But when it comes to children, to, to small children, and I really want to emphasize this, you make sure you get a pony that ticks all the boxes. You don't want to get out there and have something happen one day with your child and think, do you know what, I wish I'd done a better job of that or prepared that better earlier. When they're really small and their balance isn't so good, their timing isn't so good, their understanding of what's happening, um, isn't that highly developed? You need to make sure that you've been the one that's, that's checked all those boxes before you bring your, your small child out to the pony. Okay, so we've got backwards, we've got hind quarters and fore quarters. Now, another big thing is that um, you've got to have a pony that leads really, really well. I don't just mean good, the pony needs to lead really, really well. You're going to be busy, especially with very small children, with the leader in one hand and the child in the other hanging on to here. So you can't afford to have a pony that, that lags back, that hangs behind, uh, or that takes a lot of work to, to get them going. So make sure you've got a pony that leads really well. I'll show you what I mean. I'll just bring her a bit further away from the camera. <clears throat> so when I walk forward, you imagine I've got a child on the pony's back that I'm hanging on to. If I ask her to come forward, she needs to come up and stay alongside me. If I stop, she needs to stop and this is where the education of the pony comes in. She's really got to be trying to help me out now so that I can help the child out too. Again I'll come forward if I turn I'm just holding my arm up here as if I was hanging on to my child. When I turn she needs to turn and she needs to stay right with me. So she's turning across me this way. When I go back the other way again she needs to be able to move out of my space and turn nicely across this way so that I can just hang on to my child on her back. When I stop, she needs to stop and stay with me. It's really important. It doesn't seem like very much, but um, if you've got a really small child up there, and you'll see this when I bring out my youngest daughter, she's only just turned 17 months old. Obviously, she doesn't have much balance, so I'm really going to be busy up here holding her on. The pony's got to be able to do its job. If you've got um, uh, a pony that's quiet but not educated, which you'll see with my son's pony, a beautiful little pony, 
but she's only very young. We still work on her education. When she steps out, when she takes that first transition to go, she's a little bit too speedy, a bit too zippy. Um, and because his core balance isn't great yet as far as riding ponies go, it just leaves him behind a little bit. Um, and if you're not careful, that sort of thing can start to erode your child's confidence. So you really need to make sure that the pony leads and transitions smoothly and calmly. Really, really important. Let's see if we can ask her to keep up a little bit if I walk a bit quicker. Come on, Tilly. Come on, bub. So there she's just transitioned into a little trot. Quite smooth, and then back down to a walk again. Up into a trot. See how smooth that transition is? Down to a walk. We'll try it again. One more. Up into a trot. And down into a walk. And just back over here, and then we'll come down to a stop. Good. Now there she's just walked forward a bit more than what I would like. And you can see I had to pick up the rope to bring her down. And this is an educator pony. She's helping me out. But you imagine one that wasn't, or that was a little bit too zippy. In that moment, I'd have to let go of the child, which I won't be able to do with a small child. So you really need to make sure that the pony can help you out. Let's just make sure she can step back a step or two as well. Great. Isn't she a fantastic little pony? She just does a great job to help me out and that makes a, a huge difference to my to my child when they're learning to ride and to be around ponies. She's a great little girl. And the last little thing that I want to check out before we move on is that uh, to make sure that your pony can handle having somebody on both sides of them at the same time. Um, we'll see why this is so important in a little while with, with uh, really small children but if you've got a baby sitting up here um, and I'm talking a really small baby now that's maybe just learned to sit up, can't sit up by themselves yet. You're going to have two parents out here doing those first initial little introductory rides. Um, one parent leading the pony and the other parent holding the child. You'd be surprised how many horses aren't terribly comfortable with having two people really close up. They can be okay when they're at the halt, but once you get walking and they start getting into movement, it can be quite a task for parent number two on the other side holding the pony, holding the child on the pony there. Sometimes they get a little bit impulsive when you've got two people in close proximity. So just make sure when you're checking the, the pony out and you go and have a look around and see if you can find the perfect pony for your tiny tot. Make sure that they're quite happy to have somebody very close in their space on both sides at the same time. Okay, that's our checklist for finding out about our, our perfect partners for our children. Um, we'll have a look at a little bit of a look now at uh, preparing our ponies for riding. Okay, we'll just have a little bit of a look at popping the saddle on the pony. I'm going to do this from down here from where my little girl would be. One of those things that, again, we want to make sure that pony's quite happy about. They will do quite a bit of bareback riding when they're first getting started. But there will come a time when we want to pop the saddle on and we're starting to develop our riding a little bit more. So these little pony pads are fabulous, just a little lightweight bit of support. We haven't um, looked at cantering at all with our online work before. We just looked at walking and trotting transitions. You will, of course, get to the point where your child is ready to have a bit of a canter. But uh, that's going to be something that develops later on for your really small children. They probably won't be getting into the canter too much. It's pretty hard to keep up alongside a pony when it's cantering, when you're trying to lead them as well. <laughs> but uh, I'll just pop this little saddle on and see how she feels about all that. And again, you know, I'm not being overly polite with her because I want her to be able to handle all of the things that a, a child's going to do, but she's quite happy about that. And while we're here, we just pop over this little jump as well. Round we go, Tilly. See how she feels about this. It's one of the things that we'll be getting children to do by themselves. Good girl. We go back the other way, baby. She's such a good pony. Look at that. Isn't she lovely? Bring her back in again. So these are some of the things that we'll be starting to do with our slightly older children when they start to become a bit more independent with their horse. These are things that they can help out with. Okay, there's one more little thing that I'd like to have a look at um, when you're looking at preparing your pony for, for your child to ride. 
uh, and that's ponying, ponying your pony from your, your riding horse. It can be a really nice thing to do when your child is starting to get to be a little bit independent and getting ready to ride by themselves, to be able to go for a bit of a ride with you. So um, if you can pony your horse, in other words lead your horse from your riding horse, um, you can prepare yourselves for your first outings together. So let's take a bit of a look and see how Tilly goes. This is Spidey I've got here now. He's one of my fabulous riding horses. 22 year old stock horse thoroughbred cross is a great partner for me. When I take my, my oldest daughter out for a ride with her pony, this is how we like to go. I pop her on her pony, I ride my horse. She has her little reins, which I haven't got here now, but I've still got control of the horse. So this is a great step for them towards becoming independent with their riding. Um, as a small pony next to a big pony, I want to make sure that uh, Tilly's not feeling uh, intimidated by the big horse, so make sure that they're quite happy to stand alongside the big horse, that you can reach down and rub them and, and touch them and do some things with them from up here while you're alongside, and just in case you need to reach down and help your child out a little bit. And you'll see here now in this next bit why it's so important for your pony to lead really well. What I want her to do is stay up alongside me, not hang back like that. Um, because the last place you want your child and pony to be is behind your big horse. So when I come around here, I'll show you what I mean. In these turns, you don't want the pony to end up back there. It's in a very vulnerable spot for horse and rider to be in. So she needs to be able to lead and catch up and stay up alongside my horse. So there she's just trotting to catch up a little bit. This is a much safer position for her to be in. So I'll make sure she can stay alongside in my turns. See how she's catching up there? Turn the other way as well. Spidey's going to help me there with a few little turns. He's telling her that she's getting too far in front. So I'll just bring her back a little bit. So I'm just asking her to come back. Good girl, Tilly. We'll do one more turn around this way. Around here, she needs to be able to catch up. So you'll see her trot to catch up there just to stay alongside. If I want to do a nice slow turn, if my child's not ready to trot, then she needs to be able to stay with me and keep her gait my ponying horse spider here needs to be able to go nice and steady and help out as well so the horses are working in partnership ponying is a great thing to be able to do it's important that if you're going to do it that you do it well and that the horses are helping each other out good job that's great let's see if we can come back a step good job great job well done spider and well done tilly so you can see the horses working together there so if I can do that, if I can do a bit of ponying with my horse and with the pony, that's going to help my, my child, my four or five year old, when they start getting independent with their riding, to um, get out with mum or dad and have a great time. I've got here with me now um, Caitlin. Caitlin's my youngest daughter. She's just turned 17 months old and uh, she really is the horse mad member of the family. All the kids like horses, but Caitlin uh, right from when she was tiny she just when she sees them she gets so excited she loves to be around them and I've also got here Briggy. Briggy is a fabulous pony he's 19 years old he's been there he's done that uh, before he came to us he helped quite a few children with their first introductions to horses and, and getting out there and riding so we feel very very fortunate to have him and he's a great example of, of why it's important to have a, a horse that's quiet and educated. You can see what she's doing here now with him, just grabbing him by the ears. So important to have a really, really quiet and small pony. I want to stress that as well. Stick with tiny ponies. Wait till your children have got their feet dragging on the ground before you go to big ponies. They're less daunting. But uh, he is so good. I feel quite comfortable under supervision to have my children around him doing all sorts of things with him. They can pull on his ears and pull his tail and climb around him within reason of course and, and he's very quiet and because he's so educated um, he's used to children being around him he's very very easy to handle pick up his feet lead uh, riding all gates he's just very very smooth and nice to be around um, and if you've got a younger horse even if they're quiet without that education um, if they're if their personality is a little bit feisty shall we say or if they're just a little bit quick in their movements Education can help with some of that, it can, it can smooth out a few things but their basic personality needs to be very very quiet and tolerant and accepting as well. So we're going to have a little bit of a play with Caitlin um, and Briggy. Now 
My children, because of our circumstances, they've been around horses all their lives. They would have first met horses when they were only a few days old. And um, they've sat on them when they were only a few weeks old and had their first ride when they were just a couple of months old. And of course, these are just little short sessions. We haven't done a whole lot. It's not about, and not about trying to create uh, Olympic horse riders or anything. We're just about our children coming out and having fun with their ponies and um, getting used to them. It's important for us to, to have our children be used to horses and be handy around horses because they are exposed to them all the time. They need to be safe. So we just do little bits here and there. It might be only 15 or 20 minutes or with a child of, of Caitlin's age, even just four or five minutes, that might be all that they do, just as their introduction. And as they get a bit older, they'll do a little bit more. But you're pretty keen to hop on and do a bit, aren't you? Me? Do you want to pat your pony? You just want to get on and have a ride? How about we rub him first? No? You just want to hop on? Okay. So here we've just got the little bike helmet on, on Caitlin. She's pretty keen to hop on, so we'll pop her on. It can be an expensive exercise to be buying push bike helmets and horse riding helmets for children this age when their heads grow so quickly. So really that little bike helmet will be just fine for now. There we go, now she's up, she's on. She's happy, you can see how quiet Briggy is. It's fantastic having an older pony, like being 19 years old, he's just been there, done that. Helped so many children already and now he's helping my kids. He's a great little guy. What do you think about that? Is that good? That's horsey, it's good fun, isn't it? So here, this is where we were talking before about you're going to be busy up here with your small children um, and you want your ponies to lead really well. So I've got a firm grip on her here. All I'm going to do is just ask him to just come for a bit of a walk. <laughs> just take her for a few steps. Come on, Briggy just wants the grass now. Round we go. That's a girl. You can see how she's all over the place there. Let's just sit her legs down a little bit. Good girl. Come on, Briggy. Go for a little bit of a walk. And you can see here how nice and quietly and slowly he's walking. He will just match me. He'll match the pace that I need. If I stop, if he feels me slowing down to help Caitlin out here, he'll stop as well. Come on, buddy. So you can see how her balance, <laughs> she's giggling, but she's all over the place. So she just doesn't have that balance yet to set up here by herself. So I've got to hang on to her pretty, pretty well. Hang on to her arm. Now even really small children, once, they're, once they can sit up by themselves, they can start riding like this. Caitlin's been riding like this since she was about probably eight or nine months old. But you know, this is about all we do, just a few steps here and there. Good girl, around we go. Good boy, Briggy. Come back a little step, mate, and see how we go. Good boy. But you can see, I was talking before about the education of the horse. He's really got to match me, he's got to stay with me. He needs to be able to walk at the pace that I want to walk. He needs to transition nice and smoothly and, and uh, <laughs> softly. Put your bottom under your bub. I'll just keep putting her back in position for riding. Come on, Briggy. She's smiling, she's laughing, she's having a good time. <laughs> there we go, good girl. Put your bottom under your legs down, nice and long, good girl. Just keep going back to that position again. And really at this age, that's about all they need. And that's about all they want. They're happy just to go for a little bit of a walk and just to be with the ponies. Round you come, Briggy. There we go. How was that? Was that good fun? Was that good? Give him a little bit of a rub. Rub your pony, he's a good boy. And you know, you can start to teach them good habits even from here. So even at this age, I'd be doing things like holding the rein and mane in her hand like this, teach her to lay down, slide her leg off, and slide down to the ground. She doesn't want to get off. <laughs> so even though she can't do that by herself yet, little things like that we can start to introduce now, so that as they get older and start getting a bit more independent, they uh, pick up some good habits along the way. You're a great little pony, Riggy. Thank you very much for that. So really at this age, that's about all that um, you need to be doing with your children. Just a little little ride, just a few minutes here and there. They're quite happy with that. I would have liked to have showed <laughs> to show you um, Caitlin doing just a little bit of rubbing and connecting with her pony, but you can see she was quite keen to hop on and ride. And you know, at this stage, it doesn't really matter. Try and introduce a little bit of a little bit of rubbing, a little bit of time together. You can even do a few little yields with the pony on the ground, but it's more about creating positive experiences 
for the, the child and the horse. So while they're keen, while they're interested, while they're feeling confident, just go with the moment. Like all parenting things, just, just go with the moment and just take it from there. And you can build a, a really fun, loving, connected relationship for, for child and pony for the future. Good fun. Okay, we've got uh, Tani with us here. Tani because she's short for Sultana, short and black, small and black. And we've got Liam. Say hi Liam. Liam's three years old. And uh, this is his little pony. Tani's a great little pony. She's a lovely, quiet little pony. Um, we brought her out today just to show you a little bit more about what I was talking about between the difference between a quiet pony and an educated pony. She, she is only about five years old. She's lovely and quiet, but her education is just beginning. Um, and she's, she's a little bit um, zippy in some of her moves when we ask her to, to, to walk off or to transition into trot and things like that. She's uh, still getting used to things in her surroundings um, and that's one of the really important things with, child, with children's ponies is that they're, they're not nervous or worried about things in their surrounding area. Um, education will help with that, will build their confidence but if you've got a horse that's already confident begin, to begin with that will really help. But uh, Tani, it will be a really great child's pony in another two or three years' time as she's had more experience. So she's just at the start of her education now. So Liam does ride her. We do a little bit with Tani, don't we? Yeah. But um, quite often she'll end up riding Briggy, Caitlin's little pony. He'll end up riding Briggy, sorry, when he's doing more riding because Briggy's just that much smoother and, and a little bit easier to deal with. But she's a nice little pony, isn't she, Liam? Yeah. So at this age now, she is your pony. At three, Liam's old enough now to start doing a few little things with his pony. So we'll teach him how to, to lead her, uh, start to work on picking up her feet and doing some yields for himself. So he's just beginning all of this now. He's still at the point where when we ride where I'm, I'm hanging on to him because his, his balance is still coming and his confidence. But let's have a little bit of a look at this. Liam, do you want to have a little lead of your pony? Should we lead her? So we're just going to teach Liam how to hold the lead rope. One rope, one hand closest to his pony like that, and the other rope across in front of him like this, and then we'll just go together. So everything that we do at this age, we'll do together. Now here, it's really important that the pony, again, leads really well. We want the pony to stay by Liam's shoulder. Mum can help you and ask the pony to catch up a little bit. Good girl, Tani. So we'll teach Liam to walk alongside his pony's shoulder. When they're walking together, if the pony gets lagging behind a little bit, mum's here to just with the lead rope just to ask her to catch up. Good job. Turn around this way towards the camera and then we'll stop and we want the pony to stop with us. Do you want to give her a little bit of a rub, Liam? So just little things like that. When, with the leading, we'll do it together at first. At this age, at Liam's age, everything that we do, we do together. He's not quite ready to be independent yet. We'll bring her over here, Liam. We're going to just yield her hind quarter. Good boy. Now, can you ask her to back up? Just put your hand on her nose. And we're just going to go through our phases a little bit and ask her to go backwards. She's a good girl. Give her a nice big rub. So Liam's doing the yield, but I'm just sharing my feel and my timing with him. So we do it together until he learns to do it by himself. Okay, ask her to back up again. Put your hand there. Good girl. And I might even see if I can just let go for a step so that he does a little bit by himself. And those sort of things are really going to build their confidence. Good job, Liam. Want to give her a little bit of a pat? Can you give her a rub? Good boy. All right, let's bring her back over here again. We'll see if we can ask her to move her hindquarter across a little bit. Just let Mummy have the rope for a minute. We'll just put her over here. So as much as we can, we'll do things together. I'll try and put the lead rope in his hands as much as I can, even if I'm actually doing the, the holding on and the yielding but this is just what we call a little Siamese twin technique here where we do things together to share that feel and timing while we're learning. Let's see if we can ask her at the bottom to go across Liam and yield her hindquarter because this is our control of our pony. Good job, now give her a little rub. Nice big rub. That's a good boy. Should we do her front end as well? This is going to be our steering. Two hands on here. Let's just ask her nose to go across. Good job and a nice big rub. That's great, Liam. You're doing really well. Doing a really good job there, buddy. So all these little things, it's important that we be able to start to have a bit of a connection with the pony for the children on the ground.
spending time together rubbing them you can give a nice big rub if you like just connecting building that relationship but at the same time doing something really practical and those things that have a practical purpose like teaching the ponies to yield hind quarters four quarters backwards this is all our brakes and steering and our safety things good boy he can give her a nice cuddle she likes you doesn't she yeah. and it's teaching him how to um, to deal with his pony and how to handle his pony now while he's just at this little age and teaching him good habits around his horse for later on so we do it together at this stage it's more me than him but just by lots of repetition just a few minutes here and there you don't need to do very much a few minutes here and there builds the good habits that last a lifetime she's lovely isn't she good boy <laughs> nice kiss would you like to have a little ride too now no gonna hop on just do a little bit of a ride you go and grab your helmet go around there and grab your helmet and old mummy will turn around good boy all right come around this side try not to walk up behind her mustn't walk behind your pony no okay let's put your helmet on and just have a quick little ride yep okay keep you nice and safe that's a good boy we'll do this up okay now when we hop on come over next to your pony stand next to her shoulder so i'm just going to be talking lean through all the things that we're going to do you know how much of it actually sinks in at this stage doesn't really matter again with lots of repetition just keep doing it every time you come out keep telling them why you're doing what you're doing and how to do it and eventually these will just become good habits that are with them for their life okay Liam we're going to hang on to rain and rain up here like this so you've got control of your pony and this hand up on her back <laughs> now give me this leg bub we're on this side today this leg ready one two three jump up up you go good boy leg over her back Good boy, now I've still got a hold of the pony. I've got Rain and Mane here. Yeah, okay, Rain, you go. Sit up, puppy. That's a good boy. Sit on the back of your bottom. So all the way through there, I've got a hold of the pony. I've got control of her. Just slide forward a little bit. That's it. Legs down nice and long. Tuck your bottom underneath you. There we go. You're hanging on nice and tight? Yep. Good boy. So he's up there. You can see how nice and quiet the pony is. She's helping out. She's going to be such a great pony with a little bit more education on her. She'll be so good. Now, from here, what I want to do, Liam, I'm just going to get you to hang on to her mane, okay? Give Mummy the lead rope. Take two nice big handfuls. Now, we make big handles with these, don't we, Liam? Yeah. Two big handles, one for each hand. Hang on nice and tight. One there, one there. You hang on really tight, okay? Keep your legs down nice and long, bottom underneath you. Hang on really tight. At this age, I wouldn't give the child some reins. Um, sometimes we'll do a little schooling rein setup, which you, you'll see with Rhiannon next. But if you give them reins at this age, um, whatever they've got in their hand, they'll hang on to tight. Um, so if he has reins yeah. and she steps off a little bit quick and leaves him behind, he needs to he needs to have a hold of her, have a hold of her mane to help him balance. If he's got the reins, he could lose his balance and, and end up tipping off and being on the ground on his bottom, which. We don't want to do that, do we? No. We don't want to come off and be on your bottom, do we? No. That's a good way to lose your confidence. So we want to try and keep them confident as much as we can. So just stick with the handlebars. That's a great way to explain it for, for children of this age. Now, again, I've got a hold of the pony. Liam's got a hold of her head there. I'm going to hang on to him still. Um, even though he looks quite big, he is only three. He hasn't really got the concept of, of balancing himself all that well just yet. So I'm going to make sure I hang on to him just to help him out. Now you see there, Tony just walked off before I asked her to. That's the education thing I'm talking about. And she sort of steps out a little bit quicker than we saw with um, Briggy and Tilly before. So she's doing quite nicely, but she's just that little bit uh, choppy in her transition. So she'll slow down when I don't really want her to and speed up a bit too much when I don't want her to, which makes it a bit harder for Liam to balance. We'll just come around and yep, see if we can stop. Slide up again, buddy, slide up. There we go. Hang on to the handlebars. You got a hold of her? Two handlebars. Good job, hang on nice and tight. Okay, let's go a little walk. Good job, Tani. Good job, Liam. Let's go for a little bit of a walk around here. And really, again, at this age, this is all we need to do. So. We go for little walks together. We might even get out of the arena. We might walk up and down some little hills or down through the creek or over some little poles on the ground. Don't we do some little jumps and things like that together. But still, with me hanging on to him to help him with his balance. 
Um, I can feel when I'm holding him, when he starts to, to lose his balance and starts to tip off. It's in those moments where um, they can lose their confidence if they start to feel themselves coming unseated. So I can just put him back up there, make sure he's nice and steady. And when he's ready for me to let go, he'll tell me, he'll let me know. I can ask him, if he, are you ready for me to let go and just gonna hang on by yourself? You wanna uh, try it by yourself? You hang yeah. on to her handlebars. Yeah. You wanna hop off now? Yes. And that's another indicator. If they've had enough, now let's hop off properly. Rain and rain. Hang on to there. Hang on to the rain. There you go. Slide down. If they've had enough, don't push the issue. A few minutes here and there will build their confidence. It'll build their riding skills. You, It'll honey. help them stay happy with their ponies. You want to give her a little cuddle and say thank you? Yeah. You give her a little pat and a cuddle and say thank you. She's been a good pony, hasn't she? As much as we want them to ride horses, you can't make them do it. And the more you try, the less they'll want to do it and they'll be less keen next time. So short and sweet, nice little sessions, keep everybody happy and just build it from there. Thanks Liam, that was good fun wasn't it? Isn't she a good girl? You want to hang on to the, the rope there for a minute, give her a little rub? Good boy, she's a lovely pony. Okay, so here we've got Rhiannon and Tilly. So Rhiannon, how old are you Rhiannon? Four, you're four and a half now. Do you know how old your pony is? She's eight, isn't she? She's eight. We've already met Tilly before on the other video when I was having a little play with her. She's a fantastic little pony. Um, you love your pony, don't you, Rhiannon? She's your friend? She's your friend, yeah. You want to give her a little rub all over for mummy? So by the time the children are getting up to around Rhiannon's age, she's about four and a half now, they're starting to get a bit of independence. So Rhiannon knows how to lead her pony now. She's starting to learn to do a few little yields, which we'll do in a minute. She can back her horse up and move her hindquarter around. She's starting to be able to pick up her feet now too. So we're still doing a lot of things together, same as I was with Liam before, um, sharing my experience with her. But where possible, I'll back away a little bit and try and let her do more and more things by herself. So at this age now, we're starting to get to be a little bit more independent, which is pretty exciting. So let's have a little bit of a look. Rhiannon, can you come around here for mum? and just show us how you just rub your pony's face all over, rub her ears. Just come over this side a little bit so we can see with the camera, that's a good girl. Now can you go and rub her down her, down her neck and rub her legs. Good girl. And along her back. Good girl. Just let her have a little bit more lead rope, babe, so she doesn't turn around. Just hang on to it with just one piece like this. Let go with the other hand. There we go. And you want to go and rub her tail for mummy? Go and give her a tail a big rub. Good girl. You want to come around the other side and do the other side as well? So we're starting to get into a few things now, like the beginning of the, the Quantum Savvy program where we're doing some no yields and some contact yields, fairly basic things, but it is building Rhiannon's independence and building their rapport and their connection together. Do you think you can back Tilly up? You want to come and stand in front of her and see if you can back her up with your hand on her nose? So put this hand up here. Okay. See if you can just back her up a step. You ask her back. Good girl, another step. Good girl, and a big rub. Good girl. Do you want to try that again? Another step. So again, all these things are brakes and steering. Might, mummy might help out just a little bit. Now you ask. Another step, Tilly. So all this groundwork, you can see um, like children really just want to hop on and ride. You can really see that with Caitlin before. She's just up, 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 wanted to ride. But it is important that um, children learn how to handle their ponies on the ground as well so they can be safe and have that connection and build that bond together. So you don't want to be making them do lots and lots of groundwork, homework. It's much more fun for them to ride, but it's nice to cuddle and kiss your pony too, isn't it, Rhiannon? Mm -hmm. Give them little cuddles, that's good fun too. Yeah. So try and introduce little bits of groundwork when you can. Um, as they get a little bit older, you can do longer and longer, but um, just a little bit here and there, we'll, we'll build those good habits and, and get that connection happening. And we'll be able to start to um, look at our safety too. As I said, back up, hind quarter yields, four quarter yields, that's all our, our brakes and our steering. So it's really important that the pony will do all these. It's even more important that they'll do it for the child. They, it's one thing for the pony to listen to the adult, but they do ultimately need to be able to listen to the child and, and have that, that connection, that communication there together. So you wanna hop up for a sec, Rhiannon, and we'll have a look at yielding her bottom, yielding her hind quarter. Can I come around this other side over here? Okay. See if you can just ask her hind quarter across. So put one hand on her bottom up here. Now tip her nose towards us, we'll just shorten up the rope a little bit. There we go, see if you can ask her hindquarter across. 
That's a good one again. Another step. Good girl. One more. Ask her again. Mum will just help out a little bit. Good job. Now give it a nice big rub. Give her bottom a rub. Say thank you. Can you do her front end as well? Come up here and put your hands on her neck and on her face and ask her front end to move across. That's a girl. There you go. Mum will help out a little bit. Good job. Keep going. A little bit more so we can see with the camera. Lovely. Give her a nice little rub. That's fantastic. So those sort of things, we do those both sides. Again, hind quarter is, um, that's our, our control of their speed and their movements. That's really important for our, our safety. Back up is our brakes. Four quarter yields are our steering. All really, really important things to have when you're riding your horse. But great to know on the ground that they're going to work. Is that Rhiannon? Mm -hmm. Do you want to hop up and have a little ride now? Yeah. All right, we'll go and get your helmet and then we'll have a little ride, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, Rhiannon, I think we better have a look at picking up Tilly's feet. What do you think? I'm just going to turn around a little bit. You come over here for me, please. You turn around so the camera can see. Okay, here we go. We'll do this together. We'll do it together. You hang on to the lead rope. We'll put this over your arm. So this sort of thing, picking up feet, is just helping the children become a little bit more independent. Uh, we've already done it before, and we say that Tilly's really good with picking up her feet, but it's uh, great for children to be able to learn to be independent around their ponies. And you want to reach down here and pick up her foot? Just reach down in there. Stand up for mum, stand up. Mummy's squatting down so that you can see. Reach down in here, squeeze that bit of an egg, and you lift it up, you hold it. In your hand, can you give it a bit of a tap? Tap, tap. Good girl, nice job. We're going to put it down really gently now. That's a good girl, terrific. Want to try a back foot as well? Want to come down here? We'll try a back foot too. A little bit more lead rope there. There we go. Run your hand down, squeeze her little leg. When she picks it up, you hang on, put your other hand, give it a little tap, 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 good job. You'll be able to trim your own horse's feet soon, won't you? Give her a nice rub, terrific. So we'll take her for... Mum, that looks like a little bit. It does, doesn't it? That's like her little elbow. Do you want to take her for a walk now? Can you hold the rope how Mum showed you? You think? Up here like this, and then over there so it's across your body. And stay next to her shoulder. Just take her for a little walk over here for Mummy. Over this way. Ask her to come with you. Give her some direction. Mummy will help back here. Make sure she walks next to your shoulder. Turn left, Rhiannon. Round this way, babe. All the way around. Good girl. See if we can get her to come up by your shoulder a little bit. That's a girl. So this is where Mum can help. Just walk along. Come in this way, baby. Just to make sure that the pony walks shoulder to shoulder. Nice job. And then stop. Can you ask her to come back a little bit? Lift your rope up and back her up a step. Good girl. Okay, go and give her a nice cuddle. That's great. Would you like to have a little ride now, Rhiannon? Yes. Should we hop on? Okay. All right, Mum, we'll just bring her over here a little bit. Come over here with Mum. Okay. Now, what do we do? Rain and mane first. Come over here. We'll hang on to the rain. We'll double that up and put it over there. Hang on to her mane and a piece of rain. Give Mum your leg. This one. One, two, three, go. So again, I've got a hold of the pony here while Rhiannon gets herself on. If anything happens, I've got control, I've got the, the rein, I've got the mane. How are you feeling? Good. Pretty good? Ready to go for a ride? You want the range yourself, do you? Yes. How about we just do a little bit with you hanging on to the handlebars and I'll take the lead rope. So again, we've got lots of mane here, so we're going to make two big handlebars with this, with this mane. So Rhiannon's got lots to hang on to. How are you feeling up there? Good. Can you go for a little ride? Okay, so Rhiannon now at her age, she's ready for me to let go. She's done quite a bit of riding now, just in little short sessions. We never really do more than about 20 minutes to, to half an hour at the most, all up. So by the time we catch the pony, give her a brush, give her a cuddle and a rub, go for a little ride, do our yields, 20 minutes to 30 minutes is plenty at this age. There, just let your legs hang down nice and long and low. Sit on your bottom. You look pretty relaxed and happy there. Is that nice? Uh -huh. Okay, we're going to see if you'll stop for us. That's terrific. So we can go for nice long walks like that. I'd take her around. We do some turns. We go over some, some little rails on the ground. We go down to the dam sometimes, don't we? We go for a walk through the creek, all sorts of things together. Once they get into that stage, if they're getting a bit more independent with their seat and not needing to hang on so much, then you can start to give them some reins. So what we do is a little schooling rein setup. 
So I'll just make a little set of reins out of this for Rhiannon to hang on to. But I'll still keep a piece of rope as well. So that mum can make sure that everything's okay. So I've still got control of the pony. But Rhiannon's starting to get a little bit of independence with her steering as well. Okay. Let's put this through here. So Rhiannon's got her own set of reins now, plus I've got my schooling rein as well. Okay, do you want to go somewhere? Yes. Okay, push your hands up and forward. You can let go of her mane now, babe. You've just got the reins. Give her a little squeeze. If she doesn't go, mummy will just help out a little bit. Good. Now just relax your hands down. Good girl. You want to point this way and steer this way? Nice and high with that direct rein. Good job. Nice and high. So Rhiannon's just starting to learn some rein positions now. Good, right her forward. Push her hand forward, point over this way, direct rein. So she's just starting to learn to do some rein positions. Want to steer that way now? Point that way. If pony doesn't go, I'm still here to help out. Keep pointing that way so we can turn to the right, all the way around, nice and high with this one. Good girl. Now let's ride just straight, straight ahead now. So we come down to a stop. Just turn your body off, lift your rein up. Good girl, nice and high, up to your chin. See if you can ask her to go backwards. That's a girl, nice and high. If Tilly doesn't go, I've got the rope that I can help out a little bit. Ask her again, another step. We'll see if we can do one that's just you without mummy helping. Lift it up nice and high, look up nice and high. There we go, good girl. Then just relax, give her a nice big rub and a cuddle. She's a good girl, isn't she? So these are the first steps towards her becoming independent with her riding. I've still got control but she can do a little bit herself uh, and start to just learn how to, to steer and stop her pony and make her go. We're just going to go to Rhiannon doing this by herself a little bit here and we'll see if we can get Tilly to follow us. So it's just giving Rhiannon a little bit of independence but with mum still being here. Point towards mummy. Good girl. There we go. So Rhiannon's doing it by herself but you can see because pony, uh, Tilly's such a good little pony she's just following me a little bit. So we get the sense of independence and doing it by yourself, but with mum still calling the shots a little bit. Good job. Now point at mum over this way. Push your arm out nice and straight. Straight arm. There we go, nice direct rein. And again, point out this way. Good job, Brandon. Good girl. Okay, lift your reins up, we'll ask her to stop. Towards your chin and back. Look at that. Good girl. Good job. So these are the, those first important steps towards becoming an independent rider. Uh, as I said, Pony being a little bit educated, well being a lot educated, she's such a great little horse, she's helping out. So she's following me, but it's giving the, Rhiannon the chance to start doing things by herself a little bit and get some independence. Okay? Shall we try a little bit of trot? Just a little bit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mummy will have the rope back again though. So here we'll have a look, little bit of a look at some transitions. Um, we'll get Tilly just to circle around me. Now when we're first doing our trot, we're going to wait till the child's got a little bit of balance in their seat. They're not hanging on too much with their legs. It's really important when they're learning to ride that they hang on tight here to those handlebars, but not with their legs. If they hang on with their legs, it's going to pop them off of their horse's back. So Rhiannon's starting to get a bit of balance with her walk, looking quite good. But what we'll do when we first start the trot is I'll just hold on to her again and ask Tilly to come up into a trot. Good job. <laughs> then if we hadn't loses her balance, I can still hang on to her. You're right, babe. Do you want to hang on to her mane again? Hang on to her mane? To the handlebars? Just one, one trot. One trot? Just hang on to this bit for mum. That's hang on to there. Good. good girl. You ready? Here we go. Let's go, Tilly. Just a few little steps. Good job, Brianna. Let your legs go nice and long, nice and loose. You can see how smooth Tilly's transitions are from walk to trot to walk. Really helpful for your child's confidence when they're learning to ride. One more, Brianna, and then we're done. Ready, Tilly? Yay, good girl. And down to a walk again. Terrific. Okay, I'm going to let go of you now, okay? Good job. So that's about where we're at for Rhiannon with her bareback riding. We're doing a little bit more trotting with the saddle on, but this is just really teaching her to have a good seat, 
to have an independent seat, to not be gripping, and uh, just developing all your rain positions and your riding skills. You're doing a good job, Rhiannon. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Well done. Give her a nice rub. She's a lovely pony, isn't she? You want to give her a big cuddle? Give her a big cuddle. Yeah, she's a good girl, isn't she? <laughs> okay, Rhiannon, should we hop on and have a little ride with the saddle on? Okay, so this next little bit we're going to do here, uh, I'm just going to have Rhiannon back on the lead line again. Uh, I wouldn't be in a, in a hurry to get them off the lead line at this age, really. We can start to have the, the schooling rain like we talked about before, um, but from here we'll be doing a lot, of, a lot of leading, a lot of ponying with her until she gets a little bit older. Uh, when, she's, when she's about five or six, probably in the next 12 months, she'll start to be ready to, to go off on her own a little bit more, but we'll just be doing it in progression, just step by step more and more with the schooling rain and more and more with me letting go and just doing some rain positions. Once she can um, can stop her horse herself from the walk and the trot um, on the schooling line uh, and once she can get her horse going and, and turning by herself um, then I'll, I'll let her do, do more and more independent riding and getting out by herself and just being all her without me. So that's pretty exciting but we're probably 12 months or 18 months away from that yet. Okay, come on over here, babe. Let's have rain and main again. Rain and main up here, hang on nice and tight. Give me your leg, I'm going to help you up. One, two, three, up into your saddle. Good girl, that's a girl. Put your feet in your stirrups. These are fantastic, these little pony pads. Just gives the children a little bit of, a little bit of balance. And we're getting to that next step, okay. Now, I'm going to hang on to her for a little bit for you. You're going to hang on to the front of the, the pony pad, hang on nice and tight there. So the tighter they hang on there, the more loose they're going to be down in their legs. Okay, I'm going to ask her up to a walk, Rhiannon. Yeah, good job there, Tilly. Now just sit back on your bottom a little bit more. I'm just going to get your legs under you a little bit. The pony pad is... The pony pad's going to hold you on a little bit more. Okay, hang on tight. Okay, we're going to do a couple of little steps of trot. You ready? Okay. Good girl. Good girl. Down to a walk again. Just sit back a little bit. You ready? One more. Good girl. That's a good girl. And then we'll bring her down to a stop again. I'm going to give her a hind quarter so she's facing us. How was that? That's pretty good, isn't it? And just little bits like that, just gradually building bit by bit until you can see their balance start to come, then they can do it for longer and longer. When you get up to cantering, it'll be the same, the same um, technique, the same procedure from there, just little bits at a time. But I would wait until she's another 12 months or so older before you start worrying about cantering. She's got to be able to, to, to go and stop by herself quite confidently before I'd allow her to go that much faster. We've got one more little bit we're going to do, Rhiannon. Want to come for a ride with Mum? I'm going to hop on my horse and we'll go for a little ride together. And you can put, um, and, and, and I want my horse stuck behind you. Okay, your horse can come with my horse? Okay, that's a good idea. Let's go and get Spidey. Okay, Spidey. Get Spidey out again that we had this morning. Same procedure. <clears throat> up out the way buddy. So this is a really nice thing to be able to do with your child to go for a ride together. I know as a, a horse lover and a mum it's it's thrilling to, to think about being able to go riding with your children. Such a nice thing to be able to do together and this is just a great way to get started with that with, with ponying your horse along the pony alongside you. So we'll just do a little bit of this in the in the arena here make sure it's all good. Once she gets a bit more confident with it and her riding improves, then we'll um, get out and about in the world. Okay, you right, Rhiannon? Hang on nice and tight. My mum hops on. Yeah. No talking to each other, you two. Okay, here we go. Go for a little bit of a ride together. I don't know who's going to have more fun with this, me or Rhiannon. You ready, babe? Come on, Tilly. <coughs> Here we go. 
Come around here, Tilly. So again, like we did earlier, it's important that Pony stays up alongside the big horse. <laughs> so they're not in a vulnerable position. And we can just go for a little ride together. I can control the pony from up here, slow her down when I need to, speed her up when I need to, turn when I need to. Come on Tilly, catch up around the turn. Good girl. A few little steps of trot there just to catch up. So once we're happy in the arena doing all this, and the pony and the child are looking quite happy together, then we can head on out and go for a little ride. All right, so that's a bit of fun. It's a really nice thing to be able to do to get out there and, and go for a ride with your child and their pony and your horse. From here, once we're happy in the arena and we've got, we've got some turns happening and we've got some steering and some brakes and everything's looking good, we can just go out for a little trail ride out in our, our bigger paddock or out anywhere that we want to go. So it's just, just a nice thing to be able to, to do together. Um, so that's the end of our video. I, I hope that that helps. I hope that's given you a few things to think about, a few things to ponder. Um, I hope it's answering some questions, giving you some tasks to do. I really want to stress the importance of th that checklist that we went through. Make sure the pony can tick all the boxes. When it comes to tiny tots, babies through to Rhiannon's age, about four or five, you just can't afford to leave a box unchecked. You don't want to have something happen to your precious child and their precious pony and then be thinking, I, I wish I'd done that better, I wish I'd checked that out before. Um, their, their future, their, their confidence, their safety, their fun, their whole relationship together with their, their ponies and their horses from here on in is going to depend on the, the beginning that they have. So do a great job with this, make sure they stay safe, get the right pony, there's lots of ponies out there, don't be in a hurry to, to, to get the first pony you see, take your time with it, uh, it really pays off in the end make sure that the pony is quiet and educated. I think we've really seen the difference here with, with Tilly, how wonderful she is and the, and the lovely time that Rhiannon has with her. Um, everything's just looking great for their future together. That's really about as much as you, you want to do with your tiny tots at this stage. If you can have them um, walking and trotting up, up at this age, leading them around, starting to get on the schooling rein, doing a few little independent things, that would be really great. From here, as Rhiannon's riding improves and her seat improves and her confidence improves, she'll start getting up into the trot a bit more and eventually into the canter once she can um, get her horse to, to go and stop and, and bend and, and turn for herself. Um, once they get through that stage, at Quantum Savvy we do actually have a, a program for, especially for children. So that's aimed at children from the ages of about 7 to about 14. It's a great little program, it's a condensed version of the, the Quantum Savvy, the, the actual Quantum Savvy Foundation program in itself. So that would be my next step from here, get into the children's program when they get up around the, the six or seven year age and uh, that will set them up for their, their future with horses and for whatever they'd like to do with them. I hope you enjoyed the video, make sure you read the book, check the checklist and I look forward to meeting you someday. Thank you.